When using the internet, what are some of the tips on setting up a profile name? What are the do's and don'ts? Okay, it's a real good question, a very common question, because it's the first thing that anybody asks you when you get onto a website. What's your email address and then come up with a username? It's really hard to do on the spot. I think what you want to avoid is what everybody else does, which is using your real name, uh, using a generic combination of uh, single lawyer or something, something that's really bland. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is, is come up with a pun or a play on words. So it's taking a subject that is important to you. If your subject is writing, mm -hmm. you'd probably drill down and come up with 10 words that have to do with writing. Right? You can go to a website called rhymezone.com and it'll, it'll help you out with this. Come up with a whole bunch of words that have to do with writing. Mm -hmm. And then you're trying to find simple words that could be used in multiple ways. So you might want to call yourself the right stuff or stupendous catch or you know, like that kind of sure. stuff. You're really just trying to take that material and spin it in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And that's where the really interesting usernames come from. Uh, I've had, I've, I had a client yesterday who, what do we name her? The Eyes of March. Eyes of March. The Eyes of March from the Eyes of March from Julius Caesar. Yeah. Nice. Um, and she's, you know, she's in a marching band. So and it works out. Okay. Question number two. Evan, what is the best advice on location for the first date? Um, I think a really great first date, and it sort of depends on what your goals are on the first date. But you want to avoid anything that's generic. So we, before we talk about what we do, we talk about what we don't do. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go to a movie. You don't want to go to theater. You don't want to go to a concert. You want to interact. You right. want to keep it light. You want to keep it fun. You don't go to coffee. Coffee is really like low stakes. Question number okay, three. question number three. What's the worst location for a first date? Uh, the worst location for the first date were the aforementioned places. Uh, I think people tend to go on dates where they have some form of entertainment mm -hmm. to take the pressure off of them from having to talk, mm -hmm. yet that defeats the purpose of the entire date, which is other. to get to know each other. Absolutely. And in my experience, the worst times that I had were when I didn't get a chance to get to know her, learn more about her, or get a chance to show my sense of humor. Because how could you show a sense of humor when you're sitting there staring, yeah. staring at the screen? I mean, you might be able to talk for a little bit after on the way to the car, mm -hmm. but that's not a real chance to bond. So, so anything that provides a level of distraction, right? You could, you could walk through a park, you could go bowling. Anything that, that where you're doing an activity and it's fun mm -hmm. could be a great first date. Uh, it's just not something that fully occupies you to the point where you can't talk. Right. Absolutely. What are the must-dos every man should remember on the first date? I love this question. I wish I had more than a minute to answer it. Um, for a guy to be a really great first date, he has to put whatever his own selfish agenda is aside. Right. You focus on what she wants. Make plans a week in advance. Check in during the week to say you're thinking of her. Confirm the day before. Show up on time. Dress well. Shoes match the belt. Absolutely. Be chivalrous. Open the car door. Come up with a cool, fun, atmospheric place where you can talk and get to know each other, ask her questions about herself, right? Absolutely. tell relevant anecdotes, uh, pick up the check, no questions asked, sure. know of a good backup bar next door where you can take her afterwards, nice. pick up the check, bring her home, give her a kiss goodnight, tell her your call the next day, call the next day. Mm -hmm. You do that, you're getting a second date. Absolutely, day. absolutely. Now you mentioned chivalrous. Is chivalry dead? I don't think chivalry is dead at all. Uh, I think it's sometimes lying dormant, uh, and I think a lot of people aren't even taught. It's one of those things that you don't, you know, you don't come out of the womb knowing what chivalry is. I didn't. Um, I didn't come from that that background. My family's you know Russian immigrants and things like that, and so I didn't know anything about chivalry. I only had to go out with about 300 women who told me how much I sucked before I started to get a clue. So I think it's really important for women to forgive guys who don't know what they're doing. They're doing the best that they can. Even if it's stupid, even if you're like, how could he say that, how could he do that? If he's doing it, it's probably because he thought it was a good idea. He <laughs> thought you'd like it. So forgive guys. I always tell my women clients, forgive the ignorance. Right? They know not what they do, but the reason they're there is because they want you to like them. Okay, Evan, rank today's dating priorities, what women want in a man. Personality, looks, sense of humor. 
personality, look, sense of humor, put that in order. Okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that material. I'm gonna bring in something from the outside. Okay. I did something for Harlequin Books. I was the Harlequin Books romance report consultant in 2006, which is the funniest title I've ever held. And they made me memorize a whole bunch of facts. And one of the things that I learned that was really, really interesting was that women and men were looking for the exact same thing. And when they listed their characteristics that, that was, were the most ideal. Mm -hmm. And what tied for the top two were confidence and humor. Now, again, I didn't, I didn't make that up. I'm just reporting it. Someone else's statistics. Confidence and humor are at the top of the list of, but of what both women and men are looking for. What's your favorite book recommendation for dating? And then after that, what's your favorite movie? Well, besides my first book, I can't believe I'm buying this book, A Common Sense Guide to Successful Internet Dating. And my second book, Why You're Still Single, Things Your Friends Would Tell You If You Promise Not to Get Mad. Did you get that, everyone? Got I, it. I think there, there are a lot of really amazing resources out there. Uh, a favorite is uh, Pat, Pat Allen, Getting to I Do. Uh, where she really talks about masculine and feminine energy and, and uh, the dating life cycle and when things are supposed to happen and, and somehow how some of the behaviors that we have that are programmed, why they don't work for us. Um, one of my favorite books that's not meant for dating, that should be read for dating, is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It's just a great book for understanding how to get along with people, how to be good in business, how to be good in sales. If you look at it through the prism of dating, it's a genius dating book in terms of getting people to like you. How do you answer the question, why are you still single? Um, as a guy who was a dating coach long before he put a ring on his finger, <laughs> as a guy who wrote a book called Why You're Still Single, I got asked that question a lot. And I'm going to answer the question with sort of a non-answer. The answer that you're probably going to want to give is, I just haven't met the right person. And it's half true. And you probably haven't met the right person. But it's only half the answer. The other half is asking yourself, truly, why haven't I met the right, haven't I met the right person? Has that person passed me by? Am I not attracting that person? Am I not proactively going out to find that person? And taking a measure of responsibility. So I know you're looking for sort of a glib answer to how you answered that stupid, stupid cocktail party question. But I would think if you internalize that question and ask yourself, why am I still single? Is that what I want? Is that the life that I want? And if it is, that's cool. But if it's not, retracing your steps, and that's what I do as a dating coach, is help people figure out what their blind spot is. Why are they still single? Because it's not simply, I haven't met the right person. Sure. It's just a piece of the answer. Right. But when you go to a party, I just haven't met the right person.